This is the Homer M. Hadley Memorial Bridge. Built in 1989, it's one of two I-90 floating bridges crossing Lake Washington, and it was built for cars and high-capacity transit. 30 years later, serious construction is underway to install light rail on the floating bridge and make this high-capacity vision a reality. Running light rail over a moving floating bridge. Wow, has this been done before? Putting light rail on the floating bridge has never been done before, and Sound Transit will be the first agency to ever do this. My name's John Slavin, and I've been working on this for a decade. Throughout the design process, it was quickly realized that installing light rail onto a floating bridge was a completely different beast. So we had to figure a way how to attach the rails to the bridge without doing what we normally do, is, is placing rebar into the bridge. Running light rail trains on the bridge also adds a lot of weight. Because this is a floating bridge, we have to be very concerned about how much weight's on that bridge. And also, there's electricity involved. Light rail trains run on electricity. We're always worried about stray current because it can rust utilities into other structures. Okay, so the challenges. There was special rail installation, weight limitations, and also electrified trains over water. But don't forget, we also had to figure out how to take a light rail train from a fixed bridge to a floating bridge that moves. Right, let's add that to the list. Many engineers work together, and here's what they came up with. The rail is set on supports at just the right height and is then installed top down. This block is made with much lighter concrete than your typical concrete. When we're done, there'll be approximately 9,000 blocks added to this bridge. We've got a plastic drip cap that prevents stray electrical current. The water goes out to the edge and it has to drip before it hits the surface, so there's no continuous isolation, it's sort of like breaking a circuit or much like unplugging a lamp. There's also a rubberized coating called corcolast, and it's spongy. That sponginess and that corcolast layer isolates any electricity from coming off that block and down into the bridge. And at the bottom, we have DEX-G. Think of it as super, super glue. It connects the block physically to the bridge deck. By using this DEX-G, we then don't have to drill holes into the bridge. With names like DEX-G and Corcolast, you know we mean serious business. Last, but certainly not least, was figuring out how to transition the light rail trains from land to floating bridge. So the solution was to take that movement that happens at one point where these angles happen, where this angle happens, and where these angles happen, and we spread them over a longer distance. We did that by using what's called a track bridge. There will be eight track bridges. Many of the pieces that make up the track bridges are commonly used in seismic retrofit work. It was a creative way of using existing technology to solve a completely new challenge. John, how do we know this will all work? We have done lots of tests on this. So many tests. The team started with computer models and then built real life models and tested them in a lab. Then we built a full-size version of this, took it to Pueblo, Colorado, tested it there with over 500 channels of data. We were highly confident this was gonna work. Sound Transit and its contractors are hard at work installing this rail system, and train testing is slated for 2022. John, after working on this project for so many years, how does it feel to see the bridge finally get its high-capacity transit? So this has been extremely exciting for me and all the people that have worked on it, and it's taking a large team of folks to develop something unique. It's sort of the whole fun of what engineering's about, is being able to take something new, unique, make it better, make it work, and the end product of this is gonna be high capacity rail serving the entire region for years to come. John's right. Being able to operate light rail over the I-90 floating bridge is essential to connecting the east side to the rest of the region. Block by block, rail by rail, we are that much closer to making this a reality. 